Bird in the world. So Steve's singing. It's gone live. So. Oh, cool. Well, <laughs> just a little bit of um, for good from Wicked that one. Oh, was it? In case anybody wants to know, yeah. I think I think that could have been guess the intro round. Okay. You know. So um, we have we have a bunch of people in our room, and they're they're popping up thick and fast. We have Kevin. Please do leave us a little message to say hello. Kevin, Kyle, Shirley Goddard, William. Do you know I think it would be really nice to What's see that? if we said, like, hello, uh, I'm, I'm Dave from London, or, you know, at a location, if we can do that. That does sound lovely, Steve. Thank you. Um, but we'll wait for them to pop in. We'll just give it a few minutes to make, make sure everyone's in, and then we will crack on with belting. Um, Kevin says hello, which is good. He is alive and well. Uh, if Think about your questions on belting as well, people, because we're quite happy to field questions and talk about maybe your concerns about belting, the gaps in your knowledge, anything about it how to do it, all that stuff. So prepare and fire away. We're quite happy about that. Mm. And, it, and if you've read the article, if there's anything you want us to recover. Um, recover? Knew you were going to jump on that. <laughs> Cover again. <laughs> the article, we, we, we spoke about, um, what, what, did we, what did we talk about? Can't even remember. It was the anatomical makeup. It was um, how blooming difficult it is. Mm -hmm. Who uses it? Kyle says hello. Oh, from Sacramento. I think we know which Kyle that is. I only know one Kyle, to be fair. That's him. Hey, Kyle. So Kyle's in. He says, hey, vocal gurus. Kevin's in. So, um... Should we just crack on? Bada bing. Let's crack on. So yeah, we're here in this webinar about belting. Um, if, if you guys read the article, then you would have read a whole bunch of stuff regarding harmonics and anatomical um, uh, goings on, you know, the safety of it, a few examples, and a couple of our videos. But we can just revisit that slightly in terms of uh, um, anatomy and sound. And you know, belting itself is a is a it has a particular character, a particular sound, and hence it has a particular a posture in the throat, which is what we were trying to get across in the article. Um, and also getting across the differences between belting and a strong mixed register, which can sort of mingle into each other in terms of sound. Uh, and, you know, partly crossover in terms of anatomy and what your voice is doing, but typically to get the sound of a belt, one has to be a little bit higher up in the range to, as a starter for 10. So getting into and above the first passaggio, so for females, you know, we're looking at getting beyond B, B flat, you know, that's kind of the lower end. You know, a lot, a lot of uh, singers might not get into their belty part until they're in a little higher than that. So Which, can I just interject there, Chris? Yeah. That that actually answers Shirley's cracking question there. Um, you oh, should, you kind of really answer that. That's a brilliant question, Shirley. How safe is it to belt in, in the female bottom register? Is it possible in any way? And you just already kind of answered that. Yeah, you know, you know, um, this can kind of open up a little bit ahead, I guess, in the uh, in the um, the presentation, if you like, but. You know, belting relates to a particular part of the sound wave that is being strengthened. So in, in the sound wave, you know, when you have a pitch, say you have an A, there's a bunch of small sound waves. If you were look at, to look at a spectrograph, you would see the wave on the bottom, which is like that, which is the sound wave, which is the pitch itself. Um, and above that pitch in a spectrograph, you'd see a subset of sound waves that are called harmonics. And those harmonics can carry energy themselves. They're like miniature sound waves. They all carry together. 
And depending on how you boost those sound waves depends on the character of the tone that you get. So this in this kind of place, it's boosting a different set of harmonics to this kind of place, so we get a whole different boost of harmonics. But the thing about belting is there's a particular harmonic, the second harmonic. So we have the first part of the sound wave, and then there's this, the second harmonic above it is the one that you can hear being strengthened when someone is belting. And you can't get the intensity in that harmonic necessarily at a low pitch. It's, it, it needs to be a higher pitch. To get so that's it. Intensity in the right character. So in terms of harmonic structure and actual physical structure, uh, if we, if we place the word belting on that very unique posture, um, very unique. Sorry about that. Very unique, something popped up on my screen. Um, a very unique posture and also a very unique set of um, a, a harmonic makeup. As Chris mentioned, that's not possible in the lower voice. But if if the question is, can I create a uh, can I optimize the sound in my lower voice to create a sound that's strong and intense? Um, and actually, yeah, optimize the harmonic structure in the lower voice. We can definitely do that. It just may not have the same characteristic as being in uh, the upper register, and also it won't have those those um, the same posture and that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. But we can definitely strengthen. Yeah, that's it. You know, you can you can have a very resonant voice um, down below. You can have a very clear voice and. You know, an operatic um, bass, for instance, um, or baritone, would be able to get very, very clear voice, a lot of energy in the harmonics that carry the sound over orchestra and stuff. And that does have a lot of volume, but it doesn't have the character that is belting. Um, so uh, when, when we get above the first passaggio and the first bridge into that kind of region, and then much higher up into the second passaggio, that's when the second harmonic itself, um, you know, has the, the the amount of energy needed to boost the sound, give it the character, and that's when the shape of our anatomy really comes into its own and helps to facilitate the boosting of that harmonic. And that that might have just got a little bit technical for early on, but it does yeah. it does uh, it does kind of address certain things. And and like we said before, in terms of the anatomy. Unlike other types of singing, like mixing or operatic or you know um, contemporary sound, even but belting is where we raise the larynx even more. The larynx is super raised. It's kind of in this position. If you swallow, you can feel it raised. If you take that bright tone, you can feel it raised. And as we raise it on the high pitch, we get it to follow that part of the sound wave um, and uh, and boost that in the throat so we can have a belt and that's that's the kind of basic explanation of what goes on with the larynx but we do need the mouth and tongue to facilitate that right Steve? Absolutely and I think it'd be interesting if you could Shirley, I mean I don't know if that answers your question, hopefully it did, but if you could outline you know what kind of singing you do, what, why, why you'd want to uh, belt in, in the low voice or you know what, your, what the reasoning was behind that but hopefully that did give you some indication of what's going on um, so we've got the posture, we've got the, the larynx raising, we mentioned in the article that obviously the tongue, the tongue comes forward as well, raised at the back, you create this, this, uh, how do you refer to it, I would refer to it, oh. it? Oh, what, what? The trumpet shape. Trumpet, that's it, the trumpet shape, um, very, very, uh, obvious to see, especially when you watch Adina Menzel. So there, again, that's the, that's the, the, the makeup there, but I, we we put that in the article, but I'd love to say at this point though, for me, is to really jump in around the fact that the word belt and belting gets thrown around so much, it, it, and, and it's like so flippantly. Like, it, I mean, students may say, "Oh, you know, um, yeah, I need to belt that," or as we wrote in the article, musical theatre directors will often request it without possibly even knowing what it is or actually what they want the singer to do. So that's why it can be slightly dangerous in those circumstances. But I would say that it is very particular. It is really quite advanced. And so spending time 
understanding and executing this in a in a secure environment <laughs> is prob is, is definitely not probably definitely the best way to train for this and don't think of it any any um uh, anything that can be just done simply you know it's it's quite it's, it's quite an advanced um area of singing um i really, really want to make that point clear here because i know it just gets thrown around so much in the industry um, so next question is, can we get a demo of belting as opposed to a very strong sound in mix register? Um, I mean, in terms of artists, um, the best one, honestly, the best one I've used to listen on, on YouTube, I know, and I've, we've seen you do this, Chris, in, a, in that um, workshop in, in the States that time, when you were kind of just sticking your tongue out and opening your mouth and, and going for it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't. I don't know how comfortable you feel about going for that here today. Well, yeah, I'm going to grab. Um, I'm going to grab what uh, the tool. Okay. The implement. Um, Surely, what I say is, just while Chris is grabbing his tool, um, <laughs> <laughs> if you could um, watch as many different versions of the end of Define Gravity as you can, um, and all the different uh, all the different singers that have sung it. And you will get a different vibe every time. And uh, perhaps when, when Adina does go for the big one, instead of kind of changing the melody and, and kind of jumping out of that, um, when maybe she doesn't feel quite up to it, if you get the one where she goes in high and hard, she's basically full on belting every time. Then you choose somebody like, if you Google, oh, I've forgotten her name, Chris, work with your tool and I'll find out her name. Okay. Um, yeah, so in terms of a strong mix, a strong mix definitely has a bit more roundness about it, as in uh, the belting sound is extremely bright and it's extremely strong. The mix has a little bit more darkness to it, a little bit more rounded tone because the larynx position usually is a little bit lower uh, and the lips are usually not as wide or spread. Um, both of those things, when the larynx is slightly lower, and the lips are a bit more round and spread, then we get a slight darkness in the tone. So on a G, for instance, where I'm at, G4. There's a G4. I'll turn that up for you guys. Yeah! Like, that's a strong mix. Yeah! If we take that into belt, yeah! Yeah! Then we get a bit more brightness. I have to raise my uh, larynx, open my mouth. And one of the things to get a trumpet-shaped uh, anatomy and get the tongue doing the right thing is, uh, we learned this kind of last year, was to take a straw or something kind of slim and long like that. And that creates that trumpet-shaped uh, tongue which can boost the harmonics in a certain way. It makes the back of your mouth really, really closed so that it can uh, boost that second harmonic up into the higher registers. And then any of the sound waves that are resonating in the mouth, which also happens in singing, especially when you're high up there, there's some resonance in there, that also gets a boost too. So it's quite hard to do it. Yeah! Like that, it drops out of my mouth. And that's on the G sharp. Yeah! Yeah! It's like that. It's kind of really bright, but yeah! Is strong mix. And if you notice, one other thing that is that about that that is quite obviously notable is it's very easy for me to slip into vibrato on a strong mix. Really, really easy because the vocal cord itself isn't extremely tense. Um, and because it's not tense, it will allow the reflex of vibrato to happen, but in belting, um, extra tension is required in the uh, the vocal cord itself, the TA muscle. I've got some cat hair in my mouth from that, which is cool. Uh, from the TA muscle, and because of that high tension, it does give it um, a strong harmonic character. It means that there's going to be more more sound waves and more harmonics coming off your vocal cords, ready to be boosted by that belting shape. Um, which is what we need, but that high tension means that the reflex of vibrato is much, much harder to achieve, if at all. And if someone's in true belt, um, you might find that vibrato doesn't arrive, and that's fine. So not not and that answers Ian's question there. Great question, Ian. A lot of good questions coming in from, from you. 
Uh, so my like mouse is broken, Steve, so if you wouldn't mind being in charge of questions. Absolute mon. Okay, so that one was um, from Ian about vibrato, which was, uh, is it fair to say that the difference between a belt and strong mix would be the presence of the vibrato? You just answered that. Well, it's, it's not, not, well it would be important to say it's not exclusive. Mm. I, th I think you can get vibrato on a belt, um, but certainly I've felt that... Um, uh, that uh, you know vibrato as you get deeper, deeper, and I think there's a question related to the range of belt. As you get higher and higher into that edginess of belt, where you think, oh my god, uh, I'm going to come off of this. That's where vibrato really starts to erase. Like you really can't manage it, and that's up in the second passaggio. So for a guy that'd be like, you know, B, C. They can even get out the other side. You know, for females that might be F sharp, F. Um, so yeah, it's not exclusive vibrato, but I think it really is. It really is okay if there's no vibrato. It's probably the point. So you've just picked on the on the notes there, and just to say, I just want to jump in before we move on. Shirley, that's great. Really heard the difference between the two there. And again, I've just found out it's Ashley Gray. I've listened to Ashley Gray. There's lots out there, but I heard Ashley sing in the UK tour of um, of Wicked, and when I heard it, I was like, yes. That's, um, that's, that's the one for me, personally. Um, and again, that's more towards the mix, in my opinion, than the likes of Adina. So, so YouTube, Ashley Gray, Defying Gravity, skip right to the end. So that's that one. Um, question, another one from Ian. Uh, is there an upper limit to belting, or is that down to the physio physiolog physiology of an individual? And Chris, you just touched upon that there. Obviously, it is. Um, we're talking about the shortening of the tubes. Um, yep. Within the throat and the mouth, and you know we've all got a certain makeup, and you know it, it comes down to basically some people have really long necks, you know, some. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, well, in, <laughs> in basic terms, I think yours looks pretty normal. Uh, Thank you. Um, so um, right to the extreme, somebody like Adina Menzel. We'll keep bringing her up just because she's just. You know, she's out there at the moment. She's uh, she's got the anatomy to shorten that tube there and bring a map of the, the mouth as wide as it can go. She's apparently it's been studied that she's got the perfect ratio between mouth and head to create the trumpet shape at the front to belt as well as she can and as high as she can. That's the point because obviously this shortening the tubes increases the pitch or it helps us increase the pitch. So, um, so in 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 a word, Ian. Yes, um, it is no, down to the individual. I do have, by the way, um, if you guys wanted to Google that research, uh, you could Google Ingo Titze, T-I-T-Z-E, uh, I-N-G-O space T-I-T-Z-E, Ingo Titze, and I think it's called um, Source Track Interaction in Female Belt. If you Google that, you will probably find the research, and it has a table in there of a bunch of singers that were measured, and their mouth to head ratio. And Adina's head is really small, but her mouth is really big, and that means, yeah, like Steve said, she can, she can track that second harmonic and that pitch higher and higher and higher because she is able to create such a short vocal tract. So if you wanted to check out that research, and there is an equivalent one for male singers that is. You know, just change the word female to male, and you'd be able to find it. And um, so back to back to Shirley. Ashley, sorry, my, I, you know, one for one, I mumble, and two, um, I've got a mild speech impediment. So Ashley Gray, and that's Ashley A S H L E I G H Gray uh, G R A Y, and that's the UK Wicked Tour. So back to the questions. Um, we're going to jump in with. I think we're going to finish off with Ian here because he's come back and said, "I'm not sure when I belt, I then slip into mix on the offset of vibrato. Uh, offset to vibrato. It's where the line blurs between the two for me. Um, when I belt, I slip into the into mix on the offset to vibrato. Is that offset or onset? Because uh, you know we often find people slip into slip into mix on the onset." Of vibrato. I mean, it's put offsets, but. Mm. 
That's strange. It'd be nice to have a bit more clarity on that, Ian, if you could um, send it. And what's the, the, the point that what's the ability to, what, you know, what is our ability as an individual to stay with that posture, uh, that, that belting posture? That's what it comes down to at the end of the day, doesn't it? You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a very unique set of, well, set up. Um, and, and to stay there, that's the hard bit. Um, yeah. So yeah, um, it might be, your body might, if, it, especially if, you, if you're very balanced and you're missing a balance for many years, your body's likely to want to default to that at any point and, and uh, be like, get me out of the fire, please. Yeah. Um, Ian, basically I belt and then an, uh, an offset, and then offset the belt into a mix in order to achieve vibrato. Uh, and then I offset the belt into, oh, okay, so he, he's choosing mm. in order to find vibrato. You're a great singer, Ian, by the sound of things. That, that sounds like it requires quite a bit of control. Um, but, but that does make sense, you know, in terms of, in terms of the way the larynx sits in vibrato, because quite often the larynx can drop in vibrato because people find, or find vibrato easier on the vowel, uh, which drops the larynx, but typically we're singing, we're singing um, on top of an ah shape. Um, when it comes to belting, so that can change the harmonic property of your voice in a in a flash. So you might find that you slip into mix from a resonance level, but also if you're in belt, remember you've got very high tension in the vocal cord itself, and in order to achieve vibrato, you're going to have to release some of that tension to allow the reflex to happen. And again, that's going to take you out of the belted sound because. Um, the less tension you have in the TA, it's going to change the way the sound wave sounds as it comes off of the source. So that completely makes sense, but it, it can be practiced to try and keep yourself in that spot, whether it be the vowel, the vocal cord, or both, and try and find a vibrato on that, but bearing in mind it will be probably very shallow and not a big one because tension is massive and it can't wave big if at all. Nice answer. There is there was one about um, there, Steve, wasn't there? That might be interesting. Is that there was, I saw a question go past um, regarding the larynx being high. Uh, is it belting or pulling chest? Yeah. Nice, nice, nice question. You want to grab that one? That's an interesting topic. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, we're talking extrinsic muscles. And you know, pulling is normally related to squeeze, and well, the, the the sound of squeeze, and what that is is other muscles getting involved, um, often confused with, or at least linked with chest voice. So people will be like, I want to sing, I want to sing that note in chest, which actually, if you think about it, actually is like the weirdest sentence um, that you could actually say, because um, as we know, chest voice is just a Sensation. Survey on that and find some weirder ones. To be honest, <laughs> all the questions out there. Like, I'm not even going to say one because it was too rude. But. Okay. Um, well, okay. It's mildly weird. Um, it's a mildly <laughs> weird sentence. But no. So chest voice is, is a sensation. We want to sing a certain pitch. Okay. Ha what What are we going to do in order to create that pitch? Um, what are we going to do to create the sound we want to create on that pitch? That's what it comes down to, and in a belt, it's a very, very unique makeup. We can say it again, and it's the the larynx rising without, with actually very little extrinsic musculature activation um, involved. The larynx rises. There's obviously tension there um, intrinsically. Uh, the tongue comes forward. All those things happen, but actually, there aren't. The pharynx isn't. Um, the pharynx isn't imploding. <laughs> Um, there are extra muscles get control, essentially, right? Sorry, it's all kind of within your control. Within control, yeah. So, um, so yeah, I think it will actually. Uh, this will actually link to the another question from Carl, which he says, "Are you supposed to feel a lot of subglottal pressure or more of a floating sensation when you bow?" And I just want to say um, that you know, the, the, when we're talking about feelings, that's a difficult thing to talk about anyway, because obviously it's a very unique thing to say. Um, this feels. A certain way, but as a global, as a global thing, if we're feeling like that, if we're feeling squeezed and like I can't continue with this 
for much longer, or it's hard to explain because it's a feeling, but if you're feeling in trouble, um, then all of those things we shouldn't be feeling with, with uh, belting. Um, again, it should just be a feeling of, uh, it's a lovely word there, Carl, float. It should be a feeling of um, uh, almost release and, and let go. Um, so um, in terms of the difference, uh, belt and, and um, pulling, extrinsic muscles, very, uh, a difference in squeeze and a difference in pain. Um, and, uh, but in terms of subglottal pressure, Chris, what do you want to say about that? Well, yeah, I mean, um, uh, I think one of the things that strikes me about belting and pulling chest is that uh, pulling chest is completely involuntary. Pulling chest is, is um, yeah, muscles reacting to instability. You know, I think that, that's a good way to look at it as well. Mm. Um, but belting isn't unstable. It's a choice. It's actually very stable, in fact. And um, uh, but the voice is trained. If you're going to belt safely, the voice is trained in, a, in such a way that you know range is really good. The ability to mix um, on those notes is already there, and head voice is super healthy. There are no cracks in the bridge. You know, coordination in the voice is awesome, and that's when someone can bring about a posture of pulling chest, but not get the result of it. Instead, they get a belt. So the subglottal pressure. Um, is pretty high. You know, the, the pressure behind the vocal cords is pretty high because in a belt, the tension of the TA and the closure of the vocal cords is all very high. So um, if you want guys want to look up the closed quotient um, measure of the voice, that is the amount of times, or in, in one vibration of the vocal cord, how much of that vibration is closed and how much of that vibration is open. And so you get like, you can either get like this, which is mostly open and a little bit closed, but in belting it's more like this. It's more like that, which means the sound will be much less breathy, um, it'd be much cleaner. Um, the, the pressure underneath the vocal cords will build to a high level because because the closed phase of the vocal cord means that it will build up, it can't get through, so it only gets released on that very quick one, as opposed to mixing is a bit more like release, you know, air is released. Um, but because the closed phase is really long, air is released much slower, you don't really need any air to belt. In fact, don't take a big breath for it because you'll only blow yourself out. Um, and that's where people get a little bit un come unstuck with belting, is that they take a big breath, and go for it, but in truth, it's more about the posture. It's more about what goes on in the throat and getting the right shapes um, on the mouth and the right action on the cords. And then the vocal cords can just deal with a very small amount of air pressure. Um, and that's where you know you have to look at supporting it correctly, which can involve the lats um, to to generate enough pressure because you don't have a big belly full of air, so the abdominal muscles aren't going to help much. Um, if you're taking a short breath, which is what's needed. So quite often that whole engage the lats situation. And Ingo Tietze in one of his books, Vocology, does say that engaging the lats um, can have a fixing effect on the larynx. Um, and in belt, what you really need is a larynx that ain't going to move. So, uh, so the notion of supporting with the lat the lats has an effect on the air, but it could also have a fixing effect on the larynx. So in general, yeah, the airflow is is a very, very important part of belting and needs to be concentrated on. Nice. We've got time for one more question. Yep. Um, and uh, it's from Shirley, uh, and she says, so certain vowel sounds, i.e. ah, are better for anything requiring, uh, I guess that means other than a closed mouth shape. Um, and I, that's a great question again, really good questions. It's, um, in terms of training, definitely, you know, if we're, we're aiming for those kind of wide mouth shapes, then that's going to be encouraging um, the posture that we require for a belt. Um, if we flip it on its head, and, and that question on its head, and we kind of say, well, remember that vowels are actually the result of the posture. So, yeah, if, if, um, if we're... <laughs> If we can, if we're able to configure our 
mouth and lips and tongue in a, in a way that we go, do you know what, that, this, this flick on the belt switch, then as a result we're going to hear wider sounds. So kind of chicken for the egg really, but um, whether we create the posture first and as a result we, we receive wider vowels, ah, that kind of stuff, or whether we aim for that to train it, um, both, both, both sides of the coin we're going to be receiving a wider vowel. But I want to pick on one thing, if I could, if we just mentioned some of there, Chris, if you want to. Um, in teaching students, it's interesting because I do. There's a lot of students come through the door that, up and above the first bridge, they are able to create a really strong sound. Like just for example, girls on a B or a C, sometimes a C sharp, and um, and they're able to to do that, um, like and wallop it. And that must feel that kind of feels good, um, and it sounds personal preference pretty good as well. Uh, is it sustainable? Um, that's a question that needs to be asked. And what I feel about that is that what 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 we're able to do maybe maybe it's the instinctive instinctive kind of caveman in us where you know we are built to yell. To an, it, again, kind of studied that uh, fight or flight response that is, is part of our makeup. And some people are able to teach themselves to yell like that up to a certain point. Now the problem for me comes that um, that that's the only way that a B and a C is achievable in a full sound. Um, and then trying to retrain the larynx to come down, um, therefore encouraging a more closed vowel is something that just it just isn't it. It hasn't been experienced before for that singer, so it's really foreign, and um, and so that that's that's a big one. And I'd say that although we, it's very could be easy for us to 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 create a, a wide vowel in a very strong way up to a B flat B C C sharp for a girl, and for a guy we're going to be talking the F F sharp G. Um, that might be, if we continue to, to use that as our only strong sound in that area of the voice, we may be limiting the pitches above that. And I know that's a bit of a long-winded answer there. No, but I totally I, feel I you. Think it's a good point. Yeah, I totally feel you. Is that yeah? You know, you you belt into those lower notes, and it, it could be a bit more than your voice is really set up to do. Yeah. On those vowels, and uh, certainly in, engaging that much. Um, which is what you need to do in belt. You engage. If you engage that much on F and B flat, then you kind of have the Adele outcome, don't you? Yep. You have that extremely muscular, extremely tense, grating, you know, voice at it, and then, you know, you get kind of, well, your voice busts, essentially. And, and I really feel when, um, you know, looking, retraining singers' belts, for instance, so, you know, you get belty singers in who have done West End belt, and it might not have been the perfect one, and it has resulted in degradation because you know the repertoire has been around about the first bridge, and then the next job um, is F, you know, up on the top. So you get that situation where that singer really, really needs to let go of belt for a bit, mix it, head voice mix. <laughs> My partner's looking at me because. I'm talking about her. <laughs> I should uh -huh. go into uh, Wicked as uh, you know, as the standby alphabet, and um, you know, she was in Rock of Ages before, so she was singing men's songs, high men's songs. You know, they're still hitting C's and D's and stuff. But um, for for a, a female singer with a makeup like hers to give it the intensity that's needed for musical theatre on those low notes means it requires a hell of a lot of activation of the vocal cord, too much really. Um, but that's that's just the way it's supposed to be and so the, the process she's gone through is head voice, mix, release, you know, larynx low, closed mouth shapes to get the relationship of the top of the voice much more solid and to try and train out the excess tension in the bottom and then when you can come to belt two, three, four weeks later after training twice a day, then you get this then you get this way different sound going up to E's, F's and F sharps. That is belt, but it's belt where it's supposed to be, you know? Uh, and it was it's been an interesting journey for her really and it's been an interesting journey to see it from my point of view as well. So um, yeah, I, I feel you man with the whole 
you know, train it, low, you know, closed mouth shapes, get the larynx down, get it unfamiliar for a bit, but it will soon come good. Nice, yeah, yeah. great stuff. But Shirley, you're right. If you listen to a lot of singers, Shirley, like uh, Celine Dion and uh, Mariah Carey, they sing a lot of those words, but it's like their mouth is saying, just one more, no, we It's like that. Or, uh, you know, um, uh, Celine tends to use the air vowel. Instead of singing love, she will sing lev all the time. Um, which gives them that more forward tongue, that more trumpety mouth shape. Yeah, um, it's, it's good you picked up Celine there. Just as a finish right here, just if you listen to, we talked about this last time, didn't we? When uh, uh, all by myself, if you want a really good example of that, when she's like, anymore, anymore, anymore is the yeah, word. Anymore, yeah, yeah. There's someone that's up to the F as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and. Um, yeah, and so you you hear there, Shirley, that she get, to get that. Oh, it's beautiful. The distortion comes into it as well. She, I mean, she's just fantastic. That that any man. So, and if you get the right live recording, you hear her come in. Back to Ian's point, come into the or oh, she closing the vowel. Obviously, the larynx is dropping. There's a bit more balance in the voice. The vibrato comes in. It's just a beautiful note to listen to if you want to. That that Celine Dion all by myself. Listen to a live version and it's that big note he hits again towards the end. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. Okay. Well, thank you, thank you, everyone, for coming today. Uh, Chris and I always like to say at, at this juncture that we um, apologise for rambling sometimes, but we're just really passionate. And uh, <laughs> that is true. The rambling and the passion. Yeah, and uh, tangents are. Um, they do. They do come often. So, if you listen to um, the podcast, but um, uh, yeah, please do check us out. Check out our podcast. There's more rambling. Some of it's really, really bad, and some of it's really, really good. So, um, but we have some great uh, guests on there relating to this topic. Um, we do have Ingo Tietze on episode twenty. Yep. Um, of our podcast, and you can find that podcast um, at thenakedvocalist.com. Um, or you can find us on facebook.com um, forward slash TNV, that's the Naked Vocal, TNV Questions. Um, and we are at TNV Questions on Twitter as well. We'd love to hear from all of you um, if you have any more stuff. Um, but also, please do keep tuning into Icing Magazine. We've got some stuff on uh, head voice and falsetto um, in our next issue. And then beyond that, I think we're talking about harmonics and formants a bit more too, but I mean, I, I, would, I would just like to add at the end there is that just to not, not underestimate est estimate how much maintenance your voice needs if you're going to belt, and initially how much training, how much familiarity with your voice um, you need to have, and then the upkeep if you're belting regularly, including rest. Um, so that, that would be the thing I would like to leave on. What, what about you, Steve? Apart from... Uh, the kitty. Do you want to see the kitty? No need. This is Drew, and he's a lovely little the most glow star cat. Can, can can Drew belt? Um, he can just sort of vaguely meow. He's got a head voice, I think. Well, I think it's probably time that we end this now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's Saturday afternoon, but thanks for joining America, uh, UK, wherever you are from. But um, thanks for making the effort and. Um, yeah. Thank you. To us. And thanks, Steve, for, for such a lovely afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. So, yep. Good. Join us at thenakedvocalist.com, but if not, we'll see you guys somewhere, cyber, in person, whatever. Ciao for now. Bye.